Back with you here on Gridiron 2021, Dr. Ron Poniewaz, along with Professor Larry Kelly, Mr. Football Knowledge, Larry Kelly, and we welcome Larry back to uh, Gridiron again this week. Thank you for joining us, Larry. Well, uh, thank you for having me. I'm not so, so sure how much football knowledge I have, but I certainly love to talk about it. And uh, I love to talk about it with you, even though I must say I miss my friend Kayleen Cubble. Kayleen is still with us. She is just retired. Uh, as the sports editor of the Newcastle News, uh, she's held that position down and, and done so so well for probably hmm, 25 years anyway. Mm -hmm. And Kayleen and I started in the business together in 1977. Uh, I was about 23 and Kayleen was seven. So there you go. Yeah, she, uh, we miss you, Kayleen. I miss you, sweetheart. We, we both miss her, uh, that's for sure. It's not the same coming to work every day and when the door opens up and you, you look up and think, is she coming in? And, and, and uh, she's not behind the, uh, the, the door coming in through the door. So yeah, we both miss her. Absolutely, I second that. All right, uh, we have a few topics here we're gonna talk about this week. Our athlete of the week uh, had a few uh, end zone visits last week for his team in a big win, but first, Athlete of the week, and that is going to be Laurel High School's Luke McCoy, senior running back, five foot nine, 179 pounds. Luke McCoy had 17 carries and 223 yards rushing, four touchdowns in a 35-6 win over Ambridge. Uh, McCoy's touchdowns covered, uh, uh, let's see, 15, 81, 14, and 25 yards in, in the win. So certainly has home run threat capabilities, Larry. This young man's a monster. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is about the third game. Uh, well, it, uh, they've played three games, right, Laurel? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so this is the third game in a row that he's put up just gigantic statistics. Uh, Luke McCoy's the real deal. He, 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 he's had a fabulous season, um, another fabulous night, over 10 yards of carry. Uh, runs inside, obviously runs outside, has the speed to take it to the house, 81 yards. Pretty impressive. I know Amber's football has not been, you know, what it had been in years past, but, you know, they're still a 4A, I think, maybe school. And, uh, you know, to put up these kind of numbers against that kind of competition is impressive. Very deserving of Athlete of the Week. Yeah, I think they're three A. I think they're one one level above Laurels, but still they they are above them in classification. I, I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but uh, you you very well could be right on the four A. I thought they were the same as Newcastle. Isn't what is Newcastle's classification? Four A. They're four A Parkway, but I don't think Ambridge is in the Parkway anymore any longer. Okay. Uh, uh, in addition, Luke McCoy uh, set a set a couple records. One outright, which is most career points. Uh, in football, 252 points scored. He eclipsed Dylan Jones's mark. Dylan Jones played from 2009 to 2011, and uh, Dylan Jones had 246, so he eclipses him by a full touchdown. He equals uh, Dylan Jones in terms of career touchdowns. Uh, McCoy reached the, the, the 40 mark last week, 40 career touchdowns, and that's what Dylan Jones has. So the next touchdown that Luke McCoy gets he will be standing alone in the record books at uh, at Laurel High School. That's pre that's pretty impressive because uh, Laurel football is pretty uh, pretty storied. Oh yes, uh, there's a lot of pedigree associated with uh, the Laurel Spartans in their football program. For as far back as when I used to cover the games in the late '70s, uh, they were the class of the uh, Tri County League. They've had some great athletes, some great running backs come out of that school, and uh, you know to put up those kind of numbers and eclipse some of the greats at Laurel High School, including Dylan Jones, is, is very impressive. 40 touchdowns is a lot of touchdowns. I think I had four in my career, and they were all in Pop Warner. So uh, the fact of the matter is that this young man put up 40 touchdowns at the varsity level, impressive, very impressive. Want to know another uh, very impressive uh, little tidbit on Luke McCoy? He, he tore his ACL early in his sophomore year, so he's done it basically in three seasons. Uh, maybe one or two games he played in uh, 
as a sophomore. I might have been more than a couple games, but it was early as a sophomore in, in his sophomore season toward his ACL. So he's come back from that injury extremely strong, uh, very fast, uh, better than ever to put in the work to, you know, to overcome that injury and to put up those numbers. And as I mentioned, basically three years, very impressive. Oh, yes. Yes. And again, I'm sure he has some uh, really fine young men and great athletes up front blocking for him, because as I've always said, if you got the right guys blocking, you and I can run the ball. Uh, but, you know, it's the ability to, you know, to get through the uh, the initial line of scrimmage, scrimmage break tackles, uh, yards after contact, things like that that make this young man special. That's right. OK, that is Athlete of the Week. That is Luke McCoy. Senior running back from Laurel High School, four, four touchdown runs last week, 223 yards rushing. He now sits at 471 yards rushing on the season on 37 attempts, uh, does uh, Luke McCoy. So that is Athlete of the Week. We will be back. There's one thing I learned growing up around here. People should look out for each other. Be friends and neighbors that you can count on. So it bothers me when people who are hurt in automobile accidents get bullied by the insurance company. I don't let bullies run over my clients. I do what I was taught growing up. Step up, stand up, and speak up for those who can. I'm Larry Kelly, and I'm a Newcastle guy. We're back with you here on Gridiron to talk the schedule for the week, Friday, September 17th, and the lone game on Saturday, September 18th. First off, we have Friday night games. These are all 7 p.m. games. Uh, and they are finally all conference games. We, we have our first conference uh, action this year. Uh, the, the Newcastle game is non-conference, and that, that's where we will start. Summit Academy, 0-3 and three at Newcastle, 2-1. and one. And, Larry, I remember when Summit Academy was in the Tri-County, and, and uh, you, you talked to a coach after whoever they played that night, and you say, you have Summit Academy next. Uh, any thoughts on them? And, and pretty much it was universal. You never know what you're getting with, with Summit Academy because the kids could move in and move out uh, for, for that next game. You just don't know who's going to be on the roster, what kind of talent they're going to have. Uh, but Newcastle has a, has a two-game winning streak, and Summit Academy has been outscored 132-36. to 36. How difficult of a game is this for any team with a team like that when you don't know really day-to-day -day who they have? Not, not difficult at all. I'm sure Summit Academy uh, has limited numbers to work with. 45-6 uh, Newcastle. And it might be, the score might even be uh, higher than that. Uh, yeah. Hurricane, no question. This is going to be a game like the Quaker Valley game. Uh, Newcastle will allow maybe two first downs. Uh, could could allow negative uh, total yards. They're going to dominate this game. Uh, Summit Academy might get a token touchdown uh, late. Uh, you know, but and, here's and, what and you want to see, Ronnie. If I'm the coach at Newcastle, I want execution. I want to mm -hmm. see execution offensively and defensively, and I don't want to see 14 penalties. And I don't right. care who we're playing. So this yep. is a game that we're going to win but let's make sure we execute offensively and defensively and let's be disciplined and mm -hmm. not pick up silly, foolish penalties. And uh, you, you said everything I was going to, and you left one part out and that's uh, center quarterback exchange. Cause I think in that Quaker Valley game, there were a lot of uh, shotgun snaps that uh, were, were off the mark, whether they were high or low or left of center, you know, what, what have you. Uh, they, they, I think they dropped five of them on, on, the, on the turf that night. So uh, th that would be the only thing that would prevent a higher total than your 45 points uh, for Newcastle on Friday night. Rochester, 2-0 and at Union, 2-1. and This is a Class 1A Big 7 game. And this is, boy, this is a classic right here. Uh, this, is, this is what Big 7 football is all about. You got Gene Matzik coming, to, coming back to Lawrence County, a Shenango graduate, uh, matching up against Stacey Robinson. Union might be a little bit down, licking their wounds a little bit after that Nishanik loss. But you know what? Hey, that, that loss isn't going to keep them out of the playoffs. That's, that's non-conference. Non and uh, as Stacy told me earlier this week, you know, we, you know we'll, we'll be ready. You know, that, we ought to get ready for uh, Big 7 play, and, and that's what uh, Friday night is. Statement game for Union. This game will tell us a lot about where Union is going this season as the football team. They, they 
Nishanik dominated the line of scrimmage against them last week. I think Nishanik had over 500 offensive yards. And, uh, you know, Union can't allow that to happen against Rochester. Uh, and Rochester's good. This is going to be a statement game. But I still think Union's a good football team. They got the game at home. Uh, they have some really, really, really fine athletes. I like the Scotties. Uh, but this will tell us a lot about where their team's going this season. New Brighton, one and two at Elwood City Lincoln, zero and one, a class 2A Midwestern Conference opener. Elwood City back on the field uh, this week after having last week off uh, with their game canceled against Shenango. Uh, coach, your, your thoughts, or yeah, Coach. Well, yeah, I guess he is Coach. Uh, coach Kelly, sir, your thoughts on uh, what Elwood City has to do to get, uh, to get into the win column for the first time in a few years. Well, again, it's, it's, it's not easy to create a winning culture. And uh, it's been a long time for Elwood. But it can be done. The basketball program turned it around. Stevie Antoino, I do believe the football program eventually will turn it around. Uh, but it's not going to be this week against New Brighton. New Brighton's a little better than their 1-2 and two record. And uh, I anticipate that uh, New Brighton will win on Friday. Yeah. In a previous segment, Larry referred to big boy pants, and that's what we got here. Beaver Falls 0-2 and two at Laurel 3-0, and oh, the Class 2A Midwestern Conference opener. Beaver Falls has, has played uh, Blackhawk and Aliquippa. Uh, Blackhawk last year wasn't the greatest. I, they may, may have been winless, uh, and I'm not sure what their record is this year. I don't think it's too stellar uh, to this point, but we all know what Aliquippa is. I think Beaver Falls has probably played – Better competition, um, and Shenango is winless. We'll see what Shenango has, and, and Shenango gave Laurel a game. Northeast uh, was not a good game for Laurel. Uh, Laurel went up and down the field on them, and Ambridge uh, didn't show any resistance. So this is going to be a big game for Laurel to see what, what they have. I like what I've seen so far with uh, the Laurel Spartans offensively and defensively. You know, Beaver Falls, uh, even though their record is 0-2, that's not an 0-2 football team. Right. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something. Until somebody can stop Laurel's ground game, until somebody can stop Luke McCoy, I like the Spartans. They're at home. Uh, they run the ball. They run it effectively. Uh, Beaver Falls oftentimes is a big play team. If they can keep, If they can keep the Beaver Falls running backs and wide receivers in front of them, uh, I like I like the Spartans to win this game. I do. That's a good football team, Laurel. Yeah, and I was up at the school earlier this week and uh, for Athlete of the Week and our and our lineman feature and uh, both kids, Luke McCoy and Cam Calderero, mentioned you know they beat us last year, so they remember. You know they have a good memory. You know, and it's not something that they forgot about pretty easily. So they're going to carry that into the football game Friday night, and and I like Laurel to make this a game and possibly come out of there with a win. This is big. It's a conference opener, but, you know, it's, it's not a conference opener where, you, you know, you're playing a middle-of-the-pack team and you can, you know, regroup. This is – this could very well be uh, for, for the conference title or, or positioning for it because the next game up that we have is Nishanik 3-0 and at Mohawk 1-2. and Nishanik's going to factor into this uh, championship equation too. So the loser of that Beaver Falls-Laurel game, boy, they could be hurting, Larry. I like Laurel. I do. Again, the way they run the football, this Luke McCoy is a special running back. I do. I, I do. I, I, even though Beaver Falls is a good football team, and again, this isn't a, a typical 0-2 team, I like the Spartans at home. Yeah, Nishanik 3-0 and at Mohawk 1-2. and I know we both like Nishanik, what, what they have on the team. A lot of weapons, great defense. Your thoughts on that one? Nishanik's going to win. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they have some really, really good offensive linemen, and they're able to rotate them because they have depth in that position to keep them fresh. And uh, they run the ball. They control the line of scrimmage. You control the line of scrimmage in a football game, you're going to win more times than not. It's like in basketball. If you control the boards, you're going to win more times than not. Uh, and Shanick has some real tough kids up front. They have some talented kids behind them. They're going to take care of business. And I think the game of the year is going to be Laurel and the Shannon. Mm -hmm. We got uh, Shenango at Fort Cherry. Uh, Shenango zero and two at Fort Cherry two and one. 
Shenango again coming off a, a bye week last week. Going down to Fort Cherry, not a not an easy bus ride to make. That that'll be a that'll be a long haul. I'm not sure how Fort Cherry got roped into this conference, but in, in any event, they are in this conference, the mid uh, excuse me, the Big Seven. So your your thoughts on uh, what Shenango needs to do to get back on the field and, and play well and get a win? Well, they're playing a lot of young guys early in the year, you know, especially at the quarterback position. But these young guys are not getting experience. They have some real athletes on this team. They have some real athletes on this team. They played Laurel really, really tough and had a chance to win the game in the four, late in the fourth quarter. Uh, again, I'm picking my Wildcats against Fort Cherry. Uh, I, I think they will get better as the year goes on because they have a great coaching staff. They have young kids in skill positions that are going to get better as they get more experience. And they have some tough kids up front on that offensive line also that I think is going to uh, control the line of scrimmage against Fort Cherry. So I like the Cats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, understood. And, and they are playing well. Uh, last week is gonna, was pretty rough on them with, with the game being canceled. And so I, I would have liked to have seen them get on the field last week and, and play Elwood and uh, see how they, how they would have built off that great second-half performance against the Spartans from the Right. That, that, that probably hurt them because their young guys need the experience. They need game experience. They need to experience the football game at game speed. And uh, so that not playing that game wasn't, wasn't beneficial for the Wildcats. The, I think mm -hmm. they, they would be even a better football team had they played last Friday. Then we got Saturday, September 18th, Wilmington 1-1 one one at Greenville 1-2. Wilmington had its 23-game winning streak regular season snapped last week at Liberty Benton, which is in Ohio, uh, Finley to be precise. And uh, Greenville, as I mentioned, is 1-2 on the season. Uh, I, I do like Wilmington to bounce back. I, I look for Wilmington to win real big here. But what? tell me about Greenville, Larry. If you're Greenville – you know, you got, you got a Wilmington team that's coming into a regular season game that, you know, they haven't really come into a game like this, licking their wounds. And, you know, I'm sure they're confident still, but, you know, Greenville might be coming in there and, and saying, all right, you got a, you got something in the uh, right side of that column there, big boy. You know, let's see what you got. Uh, I've, always so said, I'm, I'm, I've always said you learn more as a team from your defeats than you do your victories. Uh, and I think Wilmington will learn a little more about themselves and as a result of that become an even better football team because of that loss last week. You know, before the Shenango Wildcats baseball team won 21 games in a row last year, we got beat by Morris 20 to 8. <laughs> and after the game, we learned a little bit about ourselves, where we needed to get better, some of the mistakes that we were making. And, you know, when you, when you learn from that and you always learn a little more from your defeats than your victories, uh, and if you take what you learned and put it into practice, you can become a better team. And I expect that Wilmington will become a better team because of that loss last week. And as a result, they will beat Greenville on Saturday. Yeah, Greenville, wrong place, wrong time. Wilmington is going to – Put the hounds hammer down and uh, get a get a mercy rule win on this one. I, I look for them to bounce back in a big way and build a lot of momentum uh, throughout the rest of the regular season uh, as the playoffs uh, loom here in a few weeks. Larry, anything else uh, that you'd like to say regarding uh, where we're at uh, going into the September 17th and September 18th games? Uh, do they still have Farrell on their schedule, Wilmington? I don't believe so. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't believe so. I think last year they, they did because it was one of those deals where a lot of teams, I think, were opting out from playing, and they kind of moved both schools into the same region, and then they got they ended up, I think, didn't they play twice last year, a regular season game in a, in a, in a District 10 playoff game, if I remember right? Uh, I think that's what it was, is they, they kind of combined – regions or whatever and, and they were they were playing last year in a regular season game is, is why I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure i'd have to look into that well they were two really good teams last year mm -hmm. and you know 
unless Farrell's on their schedule again, I agree with you. I don't see anybody in District 10 beating Wilmington. And so it should be another playoff run for them. But it uh, should be a great week of high school football. As I said, there's a few teams that will be playing statement games, and it will be telling us a little bit about what their season may look like moving forward. You know, that would be Union. That would be Laurel Beaver Falls. I know what Laurel looks like, but, you know, this is a game that Beaver Falls absolutely, I think, has to win. So sure. it should be a great week for high school football. Yep. Okay, that's Larry Kelly. I'm Ron Pawniewaz. Thank you for joining us here this week on Gridiron. Enjoy the games this week, everybody, and we will see you back here next week on Gridiron. When I became an attorney, I chose to stay here because my friends and neighbors needed a lawyer they can count on. I believe that if you're hurt on the job, you shouldn't have to go it alone, especially if your employer or the insurance company tries to bully you. You can count on me to get you the workers' compensation benefits that you deserve. Even if it gets rough, I'm not going anywhere. I'll stand my ground right here where I've always been. I'm Larry Kelly, and I'm a Newcastle guy.